Hey everybody, today is Teach It Tuesday. It's been a while since we've been on here. Um, just had a few things come up, Christmas, everything like that. So we're back and we're doing a tutorial on our very own mini cane doll pattern. This is called the Easy Romper. And this is what it looks like on the mini cane doll. This is the 30, 34 centimeter size doll. And this is what the romper looks like completed. It has a wide neck. It's one piece, well it's two pieces, a front and a back and a neck band. You hem the ankles and you hem the sleeves. And it's super simple, so let's get started. You can buy this on Etsy, we'll link it down below. And um, like I said, this is our pattern. Just when you print it out, you'll have instructions. You can print the instructions, you can just print this page. This is the actual pattern piece page. There is one more page that has a little one inch square, just to make sure that you're printing it correctly. If you print it correctly, that should be one inch by one inch. So make sure you print that out before you print anything else out, just so you don't waste paper and fabric cutting the pattern and it being wrong. So. Here is what the pattern looks like, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to put this together because it is a little different because this piece, the, the one piece wouldn't fit on the whole piece of paper. So I had to cut it in half and you'll have to tape it together. So let's see what that looks like. All right, and so to cut my patterns out, I actually use an old rotary, I use an old rotary cutter to cut my pattern pieces out. Um, it just, it's an old one. This is my new one that I cut with fabric. This is the one that I use for paper. So if you wanna do that, that's pretty cool. I find the rotary cutter makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut around the dark edge of the pattern here. Some of the curves might be easier to do with um, scissors, but you'll eventually need to cut it with a uh, rotary cutter for fabric anyway, so you might as well get used to the curves using the rotary cutter. This is the hardest curve here to cut, um, but you just really gently go around the curve. If you need to stop and then start on the other side just to kind of meet in the curve here, that's fine. You will kind of rip the paper a little bit potentially depending on how you're doing your curve here, but once you get it out, you're just gonna make sure you cut all the pieces. And like I said, this is a super simple pattern. I'm just showing you guys how to piece it together just in case there's any confusion. And we do include really detailed instructions in the actual pattern with pictures and everything like that. So this is just an extra step just in case you're confused on what something looks like. Um, all right, I think I got them all cut out. Maybe, okay. All cut out. So you'll have two pieces when you cut them out, or three pieces when you cut them out. But you'll just need some tape, and you're going to put these pieces together like this. There's a tape line and a tape line. You're just going to make them match up here, you know, overlap or anything like that. You don't overlap. Just butt them up against each other and tape them together. Just like this. There will be no overlap on this pattern. And then now this is the piece that will be your front and your back and then you'll have a neckband piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut out. The neckband is cut on a fold, and this is the folded edge. So you would cut two on a fold and one of these on a fold. So one minute. All right, so I have the pieces cut. I've got one, two, which is the front and the back, and a neckband. So what you're gonna do is go ahead and open this up. So that's what your pieces look like. I just used a scrap um, double brush poly piece of fabric. It does need stretch for this pattern, so make sure you're using a stretchy fabric. Four-way stretch is going to be best, but um, as long as it has one-way um, stretch going, are pretty good. So you're going to put these right sides together, and you're going to sew the shoulder seam really fast, and then also the neck band. I like to go ahead and do the ham hot method, of course. So fold it this way, which if you cut correctly, you already have one fold, and then fold it this way, and then you'll just sew that raw edge there. I'm going to use a pin just. Make sure you can use a sewing machine, serger, um, whatever you need to use to get this closed off and the shoulder seams secured. So let me go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have surged the shoulders here and I have surged my neckband shut. So since I got my neckband here, I'm gonna go ahead and quarter this up just like you do any kind of cuff or neckband. Snip the corners, the sides alongside here, snip those. 
and then go ahead and flip your neck band out with those two snip points that you just had. Match those up with the back seam. And then you have the other two side points here. Now I just make a little snip. You can use um, snippers or you can use like a pin, whatever you need to use. So now we got the shoulder seams. We're gonna open this up like this. And you're going to hem these sleeves about a half inch up and hem them however you need to hem them. You can use a zigzag stitch on a sewing machine or you can use a cover stitch. I'm gonna use my cover stitch because I just got one and it's so fun to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and hem the sleeves up half an inch and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just cover stitch the sleeves up like that. As you can see, half inch. And so what you're gonna do is then fold this back right sides together. And you're gonna do both the side seams here. You're gonna do under the armpit to the ankle and under the armpit to the ankle. You're gonna leave this crotch curve not sewed yet because we're gonna uh, hem the ankles on the flat. So I'm gonna serge, or if you could zigzag stitch, if that's all you have is sewing machine, and I'll be right back after that's done. All right, so I have sewn the side seams here, and these I have left my tail since I'm using a serger. You do have to secure these because they are on the outside. I have a few strings here for my cover stitch. I have to secure these, so I use this little knit picker, and I poke it in, and then just pull my tails back through like that, and it secures my tails. I'll do the same thing here on this side, just to secure my tail. You can get this on waywalk.com, um, and I can do probably a short little video soon on how to use that. So now that we have all of that done, the crotch seam is next after we hem the ankles. So what I like to do is go ahead and open up the legs flat and do the same thing we did with the sleeves, fold it up a half inch and hem the sleeves, either with a sewing machine zigzag stitch or um, the triple straight stitch that'll work too, or with a cover stitch like I'm gonna use. I like to go ahead and put one pin. Just make sure you're removing your pins as you go, if you put a pin. My cat is meowing. <laughs> Sounds like a human. All right, so I'm gonna hem these up a half an inch, just like this, and this is the other leg, and we'll come back and sew that crotch seam. Okay, so we've got both of our um, ankles hemmed up here. So we're gonna make sure our pieces are right side together and then I'm going to sew this entire crotch seam ankle to ankle. I'll be right back to show you what that looks like and then we'll attach our neckband. Alright, so I have sewn the entire crotch curve here and um, when I cover stitch I have all these little tiny serger seams, serger uh, pieces here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and secure these seams here because we're not adding a cup or anything like that. So if the seam is exposed to the outside, you need to make sure that you secure that otherwise it will come undone. So make sure you tuck that tail or knot it or however you secure a seam. Make sure you do that with this, both sleeves and the um, ankles here. That's really important. Otherwise, your thread will show, your thread will unravel, and it won't look too good. Because whether you're making this for your own kid or you're making it to sell, kids get rough with these. And so you want to make sure that they're as rough and tough proof as possible. So next that is pretty much it now we just need to add our neck band so what i like to do is go ahead and fold this in half just to get my equal point in the front and the back and so i'll make a snip here like we already quartered the neck band here and then um, i know that both of my shoulders are equal and then the front and the back are equal so i'll take my pins here i just like to use three um you could use four you have four points i just don't put a point or put a pin on the last point and we will go ahead and attach the neck band and so you'll if you're using a printed fabric determine what you want the front and the back to be I kind of like this one uh, uh, to be the front so I'm gonna make sure I put my seam in the back and what you're going to do is match up the neck seam neck band seam and you're gonna put this so the garments inside out and you're gonna put the cuff on the inside here And then you're going to pin the back one and then you'll just go around matching it up to your pinned points here. You will have to stretch the neck band just a little bit to get it on 
but the neckband is designed to be a little bit wider so that it's easy to put on the doll's head. You don't have to stretch like a crazy person. Um, you will have to stretch a little bit to sew it on though, but that's why we're quartering. Um, and then you could put it, I'll put, go ahead and put a fourth pin on here just to show you guys what quartering looks like. And so the neck band will be slightly smaller than the opening, but when you stretch, it lays flat onto the opening and then you're gonna serge or zigzag stitch that on. I'm gonna use a serger and I'll be back and we'll be done. All right, so we have our neck band on. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this right side out and I'll show you how the best way to put it on the doll. I know some people struggle with that. So I'm gonna try to show you my cat is like having a, a crazy spaz. I'm sure if you have cats, you understand. Cats are just weird. I love cats. I don't know if my cat likes me. <laughs> All right. So then here is the finished product that is completely done. Him sleeved, him ankles, and a neck band. And so we're gonna put it on this doll. So I'm gonna take this one off really fast. And the best way to do that is to just pull it down, take it off the arms and then pull it off the legs and you're going to put this one on the exact same way make sure you got that neck seam in the back and then just kind of put it on like pantyhose one leg at a time here and um just in case i didn't mention it it's going to be posted everywhere in this video but this is the mini cane doll we got ours from the wilder shop i believe we were going to sell them but then the, the, like, the pandemic happened and then we just decided not to um, because they ship from overseas and there was a whole bunch of mailing issues. So we just decided that uh, we just make clothes and patterns for them for other makers to enjoy. So now I'm just putting on an arm, one arm at a time here. I'm just maneuver them. My cat is having a cats, of course. Okay, and then you just pull it up like this onto the doll and then just make sure it's supposed to be baggy, kind of like a harem romper, and I really like it because it's super simple to make here, and like I said, ooh, Lord, <laughs> it is a wide neck, and so it will kind of sit on the shoulders like this, but that's what it looks like when it's completed. It's really cute, really simple construction. Um, if you wanted to hack it to add bands, you could. It is kind of like a mid-sleeve. Um, I like it because it works for all seasons, but three pieces really simple construction my cat is crazy but i love this pattern and we're going to be making a lot more simple patterns like this be looking out for leotard patterns some dress patterns um, a whole bunch of cool things so i'll go ahead and give you guys a sneak of our leotard pattern coming out this is our leotard pattern coming out it does it features some binding that you'll need but it's super cute fits the doll really great so be on the lookout for that our doll pervin pattern is coming soon so check that out but this is our mini cane doll romper pattern. Check it out on Etsy, it's $5. And thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any um, suggestions on what you wanna see done for a doll, we're focusing on doll patterns right now, mainly because we haven't secured the software to do children's patterns, but it's in the works, it's coming. We want to be able to make both doll and children's patterns. So be on the lookout for that. Um, all right, that's pretty much it. We'll see you guys next year. The next Teach It Tuesday video will be in 2021. So I hope you guys have a happy new year. I know this year has been crazy. And so I hope that we have been able to help you at least like sustain somewhat of your mental stability, your financial stability in any way that we could possibly have helped. I really hope that we were able to. That's what this channel is about. Helping not only just moms, but makers, moms and makers, moms and or makers whatever that's what this channel was about it was about helping people especially during a trying time like this to provide for their families and so i really hope you've been able to do that and thank you so much for supporting us and my family for this um because it, it means the world to us as well so thank you so much for subscribing to our channel and watching our videos and continuing to support us we thank you from the bottom of our hearts so see you guys next year bye